Have you made the horrific mistake of pursuing a man? Were you convinced that doing more for him would make him like you more, only to realize that it actively made things a lot worse? Come here. We need to discuss the biggest mistake of your life, which is why on today's show, we're going to be discussing why you must never pursue a man so that you can realize what not to do and also why doing it will be the end of your relationship and his attraction to you. Number one, romantic tension. This is a tie, obviously, but we're going to imagine that this is a rope. There is going to be a certain amount of tension required for this to be a good, healthy, romantic relationship. There has to be a back and forth in order for there to be romantic tension. If I'm pushing while you're pulling, then that means the tension in the rope actually stays the same. As soon as you begin a relationship with the guy, you're automatically stringing out your rope, uh, getting, getting comfortable with the tension here. And the moment you start pushing, he has to start pulling. So you can only imagine if right from the jump you're pushing, what do you think he's going to be doing? He's going to be pulling away from you. And it's not until you stop pushing forward can he ever make the decision to start pushing towards you. For many various reasons in your life and in your relationships, whether it be because of friends, whether it be because of what social media taught you uh, that have convinced you that the best way to go about this is for you to do the pushing, this guy that you're talking to, right? You're like, I really like you. You treat me well and things like that. So you think in your mind, okay, I really want this to work out. So then the narrative that your mind starts playing on you is if we're going to make this work out, we need to figure out what needs to be done because I don't want to lose out on the possibility of being in a relationship with you. So you have in your mind that the more you can pursue him and the more you can do for him, you're proving to him that you're worthy of his interest. There was a message we had in the Discord a few weeks ago where a woman was with a guy that she was getting to know and he was a pro athlete, was constantly telling her while they were kind of going through their talking stage that, hey, I've noticed Notice that you're not really showing me that you like me. Meanwhile, he wasn't really doing that much work except for just showing up when it was convenient for him. And it's a, it was a really sneaky trick that he did. And so you know what happened to her? She was once like this, right? There was a regular tension rope where it was like 50-50 and there was a push and pull and there was flirting going on. And she said to herself, well, golly gee, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm not uh, doing my part. I think I'm going to do the job instead and pursue you so that you know that I'm really serious about this relationship. Mistake. He started pulling away. He started doing less. And he didn't even need to do any more because she was doing all the work. She has now become the man. If you're the woman, it's not your job to be doing the pursuing and to be doing the chasing. Number two, we're going to discuss something I refer to as the feminism trap. Before you get upset, or sp feminism is exactly what the world needs. We, women, we, we should have equality. Why? How can feminism possibly be a trap? Hold on. Let me explain what I'm referring to when I talk about the feminism trap is not that, oh, you know, women should not have equality and you should not uh, have the same rights as men. We're all in agreement to that. In today's world, men also understand that as the world changes, if they want to get access to you, their strategies are also going to have to change and adjust with the times. The smart men, really, really intelligent men realize that, oh, my God, the culture and society is actually doing the work for me. They say, damn, look how the other women are literally encouraging the women to do the men's job. Sleep around, participate in hookup culture. Yeah. So you know what they say? <laughs> yes. Equality is you sleeping with me because you can and equality is me not judging you for opening your legs without me ever having to do any work for you when he says that to you you're like yeah yeah that is feminism that is equality i should be able to sleep with you just because i feel like sleeping with you because it's my body it's my mind nobody can judge me and he goes yeah nobody judges you for whatever you want to do open your legs wide for whoever you want to open it for me first hopefully they literally allowed you to play yourself in the belief that 
you showing your individuality and you showing the fact that you're just as capable as the men is you sleeping with more men for absolutely nothing. Part of the other thing that men will also use against you to convince you of is the idea that, hey, you're a woman, you're capable, you're smart, you're intelligent. So this is 2024. It doesn't have to be traditional where I come and I ask you out on a date and open the doors for you. It's 2024. You're a woman now and women have rights. If you know that you like me, then you should come and pursue me. You then become convinced that when you like a guy or you see a guy that you're interested in, it then becomes your job to start pursuing him. I'm going to give you a newsflash. If you're frustrated with the fact that a guy doesn't seem capable enough to ask you out on a date and then you're doing the job of saying, okay, I'm tired of waiting around for you to ask me out on a date. When are you free? That is you pursuing a man. You're independent because you make it easier for him to sleep with you. Number three, the declaration of dependence. When you begin pursuing a man, you then put all of your attention and focus on the result. You're not pursuing him for no reason. You want him to like you. You make yourself so emotionally dependent on that man. His acceptance of you is going to determine whether or not you feel as if you have value. Or now, if you don't find me that interesting or fascinating anymore, or if for whatever reason, your eyes go off of me and start paying attention to someone else or some other girl, all of a sudden, I feel horrible about myself because all of my value was placed on if you accept me. So I have become emotionally dependent on how you feel about me. The more time you invest in him, the worse it will feel if he is not showing interest in you or you feel like this might not work out because now you feel like anytime he pulls away from you, oh my God, it's over now. And the more anxious you become, the more you present that anxious energy that, oh my God, you like every other girl except for me. It's very unattractive and repulsive to men. And so it only makes them pull even further back away from you. The natural state of things is for him to be pursuing you from the very beginning. For him to come up to you and say, wow, you know, I really like your uh, dress. I really like the way you look. I really like your smile. I would love to get to know you more. Uh, number four, I want to discuss a concept that I refer to as the 24 hour sale. But I'm going to use my shoe. And you're thinking to yourself, gee, I really do need a new pair of shoes. And you see me on the street. I'm like, shoes for sale, shoes for sale. And you're thinking to yourself, I, I could use some shoes. And you kind of stop and you go, oh, you're selling these shoes? And I go, yeah, do you want to buy these shoes? Shoes for sale. Please buy these shoes, please. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I really want, want those shoes. Maybe I'll come back in two weeks when I have more money and I'll go spend the money that I was going to spend on shoes on something else and I'll come back and I'll get these shoes whenever I feel like getting these shoes. When you are pursuing a man, it's like a 24-hour sale of you. You're supposed to be the woman receiving him. So the moment you start pursuing him, you're like having a 24-hour sale sale. Even the people that do come across your yard sale, they have no sense of urgency to actually purchase anything that you're selling. And a lot of times you'll have people overlook you and not pay attention to you and not respect you or not treat you right simply because there's no sense of urgency created in them to actually put their best foot forward. So he thinks to himself, well, if you're begging me to purchase your product, even if I had the money and even if I was a little bit interested, why, why would I do more to try to get your product? When you start pursuing guys, you don't create any sense of urgency in them. In fact, you create a lack of urgency where they feel you're already doing so much for me. Why would I have a sense of urgency to put my best foot forward? You only end up disappointed because... As you take it more seriously and try more to prove yourself, he only ends up taking it less seriously and not bother to prove himself at all. Number five, a foundation of foolishness. When you're dating someone, especially at the beginning, 
you're setting the precedent and the foundation for everything that this relationship is going to continue being in the future. So don't ever think for a second that letting things slide in the beginning means that they won't continue to happen for the rest of the relationship. So if you establish the dynamic in which you're going to be asking him out on dates, in which you're going to be scheduling uh, yours and his life to make sure that he has enough time for you to spend with you, you are building a foundation of foolishness because down the road, you're not going to be satisfied with the relationship that is like that all the time. You're going to be very frustrated that your relationship only works if you do all the work. Even if the relationship continues, it only continues because of how you're pursuing him. The moment you get sick of it and you're now asking him, hey, I want you to pursue me. You never take me out on dates. You never buy me flowers. It's been two years and I've got nothing from you. And the moment you even take the smallest step back, all of a sudden you realize there is no relationship unless you're pursuing him. And this is like like the worst place for you to be in down the line when you didn't do the job of just sitting back, relaxing, doing absolutely nothing and letting guys show you if they're actually interested in you or not. I know that it's painful for you when you're in the beginning stages and a guy is kind of looking like he's on the fence. You go on the first date and you thought the first date was good, but then after the first date, he doesn't text you. He doesn't message you. He doesn't call you when you're like, Oh, this is so frustrating because I kind of like you and I want this to continue. You know what? I guess, you know, I guess maybe you're shy. So I'll, I'll text you and I'll ask you when the next time you want to go out on a date is and boom, it's over. You've lost. You made the decision that because you want this to continue, despite the fact that he hasn't pursued you, you're going to do this part for him. If he was that interested in you, he would reach out to you. Don't put yourself in the ultimate painful situation of having built a relationship with a guy that only after the two years of the relationship do you realize that you have been doing all the work of making this relationship happen. And if you stop doing all the work making this relationship happen, there is no relationship. Because the guys become accustomed to the foundation that's been set at the beginning of the relationship where you do all the work, you do everything he's supposed to do while he sits back and receives from you. So down the line, when you try to switch that up, he says, he says to you, well, girl, a girl, I'm supposed to be the princess here. How are you going to swap positions with me after two years? So if I had to do all this work and I can't be a princess, I don't want it anymore. So you, you don't, you, you wear the pants once again. And you got some nice uh, brown construction pants. They're dirty. 